Welcome back to the channel. Our Aberdeen in the title race. Let's talk about it. So that has been the question for a number of weeks now. There have been seven games. Celtic have won seven of them. So have Aberdeen. Now I know we're used to the big two being Celtic and Rangers, and I understand that they are, that is in fact still the big two. And you would argue that Aberdeen finishing second would be a monumental achievement in a way. But the fact of the matter is, if a team wins seven games out of seven, um, and in a variety of different ways, you know, uh, they've they've dominated games, they've came back in games, they've they've won in every single game they they've had to, but in different styles of play. And I think that it's you're getting to the point now where how can you know the fact that they they are level in points with Celtic and haven't lost, haven't even drawn a game, you know? So wh where do you think Aberdeen rank in the title race, Paul? I mean, it would be silly to ignore them. I think, um, but we are only seven games in. I think that the 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 real title race sort of ramps up after January. So nobody's in a title race. Right, <laughs> I would true. say, and look at the mistakes that Rangers made last year. Do you know what I mean? And they mm -hmm. won the October Cup, and then, or whatever, or whatever it was, January or whatever, February, they went top of the league, and it was, you know, welcome the chase and well, blah blah blah. There was a genuine, there was a genuine point last season where we were, we were on the channel going, we, we, I think I openly admitted that fact. That I thought Rangers would, would win the league at a certain points last season, and I, and I um, agree. Um, but I think that the supporters of um, Aberdeen, I wouldn't be getting too carried away. So my feeling on it would be, let's see where they are after we've played everybody, and that's coming up. So yeah. let's see how they do against us at Celtic Park. Uh, just to 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 agree with what you said there, they've won in so many different manners, and I think Saturday, um, or did they play on Sunday? They played on Sunday. Did they yeah. Sunday? Um, you know, it looked like they were going to drop points. It looked, it, it kind of looked that way. And the marquee, a good team or a are a good, you know, contender, is is that they score late goals, and that's something that Celtic have been famous for. Not just in the last sort of few, we've spoke about it time and time and time again under Stratton, under Martin O'Neill. All of the good Celtic teams score late, mm. um, in these tough games. So, um, you know, I I wouldn't be going. They're not in a title race, but I just don't. Let's see where we are you know, like circa December. Like, Alex Ferguson used to say that titles were won at that period just before or just after Christmas. Let's see how they get through that. But mm -hmm. see, as we stand right now, they've got to be taken seriously. Well, 2-1 to Hearts with 20 minutes to go um, at Pataudry. And the fact that they came back and won the game, I think, is, was up, you know, was a little bit of a, a statement of intent in terms of the mentality of the team and the feel good factor that's going on here. I mean, you look at I kind of look at Leicester in the, in the Premier League a few years back as a good example of a team that there was just this momentum, this this winning formula that just kept on going and kept on going, and people thought, when's this going to end? But then they would go to the Etihad and they would get a point or a result, and people would go, they must, you know, it was. Up until the last few weekends, everyone was still like, Leicester won't win this, you know what I mean? So it's, it's a weird how momentum has a huge part to play in football. And I think all the momentum right now is with Aberdeen. The fact that they, they've got a group of players now that believe no matter what happens in the game, they can go and win. All the momentum outside of Celtic, surely. Yeah, well, what, what I would say is, go, if switching to Celtic... Um, on that topic, I really felt like the Ross County game at the weekend was huge in terms of, you know, in terms of a league's title race, we we obviously get battered in Dortmund and it was it was a there was a lot of negative feelings about that. And I think that if you then slip up to Ross County and draw and the gap goes from, you know, f uh, five to two with Rangers and Aberdeen go top of the league, all of a sudden, that positive start looks a little bit more gloomy. And the moment, I think, uh, not getting three points against Ross County could have seen a big shift in momentum for Celtic and how, and how our next few weeks were going to go. So for me, the three points in that game were, were always 
paramount. Yeah, I, I really agree. I mean, I think I said on here, you know, my, my partner will turn around and say to start a Celtic game, what are we hoping for? Uh, and she did the same on Sunday and she was sort of like laughing because in Dortmund I was like, don't get embarrassed. And as I said that, we conceded a penalty. Um, but uh, she said to me, like, what, what are we hoping for? And I was like, we seen these games, like three points. Roger said in his pre-match interview, they get back into Glasgow at 5 a.m. on Friday. So, um, no, sorry, 5 a.m. on uh, Thursday. And then on the Friday, so then they get 24 hours to recover and then they've got a long drive up to Dingwall, sitting on a coach. You know, like, you know that feeling yourself. You you drive down to England um, and they long drives, man, mm. for, for power chair football. They long drive sitting. You're, you're almost sitting down for a call, but you're just knackered after it, so exhausted after they drive. So th- travelling to and from Germany, getting embarrassed yeah. the way that they did, then a long drive up to Ross County. I couldn't agree with you more. That game on Sunday... It's a pivotal game. We go back to Angie's first season. Ralston scored a late winner up at Dingwall and we looked back at that that full season at how pivotal. That is a tough ground for Celtic to go to. Mm-hmm. A very tough ground. We've dropped points there um, a few times. Um, horrible travel, you know, so I was absolutely delighted with, with the result. I was actually like really... I mean, even though we went 1-0 down to a penalty, and I think that we, the way that the penalty rules have shifted slightly and with VAR, we can expect to concede penalties like that. Liam Scales' his hand doesn't go towards the ball, it's there, but it's out of his body, and I think that when you're running and you're moving, naturally your hand's going to come up. I don't blame him. It was a penalty. Um, Schmeichel, you know, he saved the first one, but he was well off his line. I mean, you, you could see that. It was a bit of a... I thought it was a bit of a weird mistake for a really experienced keeper to make, coming that far off your line. Like, that's not a... It's not... It's a well-known rule, that. So I was surprised. It looks like he sort of dropped his knee. I think what kind of happened was... I think he went early, and because of that rule... I mean, what are you going to do if you're moving forward? There's nothing that you can really do. So he, he, he sort of went down on his knee and then fell and saved it. So I think he realised that he'd, he'd made his move too early and that he was going to come off his line. And you could the over-the-top reaction for him as well, you could sort of tell, like, that's a bit of sort of gamesmanship with the, the, the shock Pikachu face, you know, that he, that he was pulling. The second penalty, clearly he's been a wee bit more conservative and he's not went, and, it, and the guy's, to be fair to him, buried it in the bottom corner. But I think these things happen, but we absolutely dominated that game. I think it was like 80-20 possession, um, I felt like he picked the team. <laughs> I felt like he picked the team that I would have picked for Dortmund to go for Dingwall, and he mm. picked the team that I would have put on the 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 park in Dingwall uh, and Dortmund. And the reason I say that is is that Kyogo could not stretch that game in Germany because we had so little possession. So he was having to drop deep, perfectly built for Ida, right? Then we go to Dingwall and we're getting eighty percent of the possession, and he plays Ida, and it's like he can't stretch the game the mm. way that we need him to stretch the game. I thought that the first half we were slow, we were lethargic, but these guys are human beings, man. Like yeah. all of that travel, a big massive Champions League night. It was get the three points and get back down the road, and they did that. So it was mission accomplished. Um, I thought the second half was way better. Um, the changes made a huge difference. Kyogo just stretched that back line. So all of a sudden, Ross County had to drop deep because Pio- Kyogo's playing... Pyogo? That's the Pikachu. Kyo- Kyogo's playing on the shoulder. I feel like Rogers made a big mistake with his, his decisions that that week. Yeah. Sp- especially in Germany, but then that starting lineup I Actually, found quite I, perplexing. I, f- I feel like the starting lineup was a bit of a panic reflection on what happened in Germany. In terms of, I think because it got beat so poorly, there was this way of going. Well, I'm going to need. I need to change something in the lineup, so I'm going to put you down. Yeah. Um, I think like when without, Ida and Hatati came on in Germany, it made a real difference. Yeah. It made us a lot more robust. Um, but then it's put. It's just, just having the context of the games as well. I uh-huh. suppose. No, no, um, having that knee jerk reaction like you're saying, that sort of panic response of like, oh, maybe I should have put Ida on. In Dortmund, so I'll stick him on, and, and then yeah. you're like, no, but that's the wrong choice yeah. to make. Do you know somebody that I thought may have got started in that game was McCown, and I thought he made a real difference when he came on. The energy that he brought, he looks like not only just this, you know, eager 
Celtic fan, but just yeah, he's actually like he has quality. He, he's got a lot of quality about him, and he knows. And he, I think he, with better players around him, he's going to be somebody that could be really good for us. But I thought he was maybe due a chance to start that game, and he's shown every time he's came on that he's he's well worth being part of that squad. Absolutely, um, and it's almost like. Shades of Scott McDonald a wee bit, I think, that people were kind of not expecting him to be as good as this. Uh, and he's keeping bigger price-tagged players. You know, it looks like he's going to keep, you know, potentially Arne Engels at, at, at a start in 11, which, considering that we signed him for, like, less than a million quid for Dundee's unbelievable, but I don't really care. Like, I don't yeah. care as long as we've got the best 11 on the park. And know- I agree with you. See, when he came on, he did not. He does not look out of place in a Celtic team. And for a guy to come for Dundee at 25, you're almost like he's found his level, you know. And for him to come to Celtic and performing the way that he's performing in the very little game time that he's getting, I couldn't be. I couldn't be happier with him. I want to go back to the game quickly. But before that, I want to make two quick points here. The the thing that that I had, you know, there's been a lot of discord discourse about. Ingles and how past couple of games has not been too great um, but for me honestly like I think we need to just put the brakes on the criticism of this guy here he just came in for Germany he's a young he's a young man he's got a big price tag and he has shown the quality but he's also a human being that went to Dortmund and got hammered and he's probably a bit shell shocked by that taking into account everything we've just spoke about with the travel and the, the, the mental side of it I think we need to be you know, let's not have the pitch fox out for this boy. Yeah, he's, I think he's shown that he's a class player. Give him some time to bed in. He's only been here for, what, a few yeah. weeks? I mean, look at Kuhn, you know. Exactly. Like, I think we've got players in the not even distant past, like in the here and now, that have come in with a bit of an expectation, no lived up to that expectation, and then six months later started to light the league mm. on fire. So I'm, I'm the same. I think that the guy... It's probably been a whirlwind few months for the guy and he's went out to Germany, his family have came to see the game. He had a disappointing performance, the full team did. So he's, he's got, I think him especially maybe, his, his head's going to sort of drop a wee bit after that. I don't mind that. Um, I think, like, again, we've said it so many times on this, like, these guys are humans, like, they're not robots. Oh, he's £11 million, pound. that means that he's instantly going to be this... Well, we've seen the quality, let's let him get a bit of form before we start, like, screaming at him, you know, and, and booing him or whatever. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly, I totally agree. And I also want to comment quickly on what Rogers has said about the, the Dortmund game, because it's really, really getting on my nerves. <laughs> it's really getting on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is unreal, man. He's coming out saying that he's not going to change anything because what we sit back and get beat 3-4-0 and all that. And I just think the attitude with him is so... One, arrogant, and so also defeatist. Because I'll be honest, um, in that Bundesliga, they've got a 20-team league. 19 teams are probably going to go to Dortmund and not get beat 7-1. Right? So, they get beat 2-1 the following week in the Bundesliga. Oh, by I a think team. Union Berlin, who, if we were coming up against them in the Europa League or whatever, we'd be expecting to win. Exactly. So, But they didn't beat them by playing this open, expansive football and giving them the freedom in the middle of the park between your defence and midfield. So I, I just, the way that he talks about it, the fact of the matter is, none of those teams, maybe, I, 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 don't, I don't expect any Bundesliga team at any level to get beat 7-1 by Dortmund at home, away from no. home. So what I'm saying is, it's not acceptable for Celtic to get beat 7-1 by anyone, and you can't justify it by going, well, we could beat it anyway, because that's not good enough. You're not managing... You're not you're not managing Leicester anymore. You're not managing. I mean, and I, I know they're in Premier League and all that, but I'm saying Celtic are a huge club that have European aspirations. This idea that no matter what you do, you're expecting to get beat is not acceptable. I I would agree. I think what I also took from his his interview, um, I think it was maybe the 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 pre match interview before Ross County. I think you're you're talking about like the sort of press conference was that if you have a, an idea and a system and your team go out and execute that system and get beat, then you could maybe be like, well, you need to change the system. But I think he was also making the point that they weren't, they didn't do that. The guys went out, conceded early and got spooked and left Maida to press himself. 
and sort of stood off Dortmund a bit, which I can kind of see his point, but I can also see where you're coming from. He needs to be pragmatic, both in his game plan, but also in his politicking. Like, he's got 60,000 supporters to keep happy. That's his job. Mm. Like So coming out and being that sort of arrogant, well, I'm st- I don't care. Like, if we get beat 1-0, yeah. we get beat 7-1, it doesn't matter to me. It's like, well, it matters to the reputation of the club. And if you look at the way that the Jim Whites and the Radio 5 Lives and the way that the English press react to this, it's an embarrassment, and we're, mm. we're sick of being embarrassed. Yeah. So, like, I get that maybe behind closed doors you're like, well, no change in the game plan. You just need to go and you need to execute it better and we need to be together and blah, blah, blah. But go out and at least say, you know, look, we don't we don't want to be embarrassed like that and it won't happen again. You know, I, I can't go another... These guys will learn for this. Like, when? When will Callum McGregor learn for this? When, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, I think he was one of the... He was one of the particular ones that had a particularly bad night in Dortmund mm. as well. Um, and... I think like that whole, well, the team didn't execute the game plan and they kind of went into their shells and became individuals. It's like he should be the one on the park to make sure that doesn't happen. So yeah. where were you? You know, come out in your pre- post-match and talk about individuals and that's it all you want, but you're the captain, you're the leader. And I feel like this is something that Scott Brown particularly bad at sometimes, especially in Europe, was he would fade away, um, especially when we were getting beat. Well, you know, I think what the debunks what Rogers has said about that for me as well is him saying, you know, we started off executing the game plan, right? So that's what he said. We started off executing the game plan, but here, we conceded two goals in the first 10 minutes. So you're saying that we started off executing the game plan the way you wanted to, but we conceded two goals in 10 minutes because we pressed them too high. So of course the players are going to sit back. Do you know what I mean? And the, but the problem is, they haven't had any coaching on that way of playing. So we got torn apart. So, you know, I think what he said is a complete cop-out. It's a complete disrespect to what the size of the club and the way the fans, you know, that it's kind of insulting to the fans, I feel like. I mean, I have a lot of time for Rodgers. He's doing great this season. But it's like, you could beat 7-1. Dortmund not going to beat anyone else at home in the Champions League or in the league 7-1. So why are they beating Celtic 7-1? Do you know what I mean? We've got the players that are better than that. And you need to accept the fact that as a coach, regardless of what system you want to play, can beat 7-1 by anyone's not acceptable. And you need to stop allowing these excuses of, well, if we sit back, we could beat, we could beat anyway. Will we, though? Because Union Berlin didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, uh-huh. you need to take... What, what, I think what frustrates me is the, la- the lack of accountability. The lack of being like... Yeah, we tried something because we were full of confidence it didn't work. We're going to try and do something a bit more pragmatic next time. Well, it, we need to wait and see for Atalanta, I suppose. I think that the, the other thing that I've heard for almost everybody coming out of Parkhead is, is that they just want to move on and they, they just want to, like, forget it. Yeah. You know, like, they'll do their analysis, they'll do their, you know, they'll, they'll do their, their, um, their post-mortem, but then that's it, they're moving on. So, and I think that's probably healthy, yeah. you know, even for yeah. like us as supporters to True. just do, do, the, do, just, do, the, do the do the stuff, have your gripe, and then just let's move on. And I we, felt they need to touch on that because I'm listening to him and I'm going, you're not, you're not getting this, you're uh-huh. not getting this. And you can move on from it, but at the same time, if we go to Atlanta and get scalped again, oh, we'll, be, we'll be here screaming, <laughs> screaming. And, and I'll be here screaming so, with you. So, um, But going back to... Uh, McCowan, um, because he, he has said some th- some controversial comments about the lead up to the Celtic Aberdeen game, top of the table clash. Um, like I say, I think it's going to be a very interesting game to watch, but it'll be a big indication, win, lose or draw, how good this Aberdeen team are. Because for me, what they they don't necessarily need to get a result; they need a performance. They need a game to be close. They can't like I think if the game's one out of Celtic or two one to Celtic and it's a close game, you can go right. Aberdeen are looking involved in this, you know what I mean? They look up for us. I think they need to lay a glove in some way on Celtic, score a goal, show you know, spook us a wee bit, show us that you're here for the you're 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 here for the fight. And obviously I think if they got a result with Parkhead it would be like right game on yeah absolutely i mean if they get a, if they get any kind of positive result either draw or win 
then it is total game on and because yeah. then we need to go to Pataudry, do you know? And, exactly. that, and that's never a that's never a fun place exactly. for Celtic or Rangers to go to. Um, Particularly with the fact that they're selling out the stadium, which I which I thought was great to see. It was great to see, you know, nearly twenty thousand fans inside Pataudry for for the, for the Scottish game and just how seeing this kind of you know what used to be a sort of European giant seems yeah, to absolutely. have a bit of resurgence. And, I'm yeah. I'm interested to see how they're going to set up. Um and uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that if they come thinking if they come with a mindset of we're in a title race here, uh, we don't need to be afraid of Celtic and we're just gonna play them. You know, we're going we're not gonna do the the low block. I I reckon that we'll do them the way that we've done everybody else in Scotland that mm-hmm. tries to do that against us. I think we'll absolutely tear them apart. But if they have a very, you know, like clearly you can see for the Dortmund game that if a team has quality and is well organised against us, they can cause us problems. Cameron Carter-Vickers has been a huge miss. You could see that even on Sunday um, with yeah. that building for the back. It looks like we're going to have him back in time for the, the Aberdeen game. And even just the fact that we're saying it will be good to get a start or, or, or you know, our first pick starting living on the park shows the sort of respect that we've got to have for Aberdeen because exactly. Um, aye. And I think the manager, to to touch on what you said, the manager has been very modest and very smart with the media. He's never once said Aberdeen are in this. He's taking it game by game, and he's every chance he gets, he calms it down. He said, "Let's enjoy this. Let's take it one game at a time." And I do not expect them to come with this entitlement of we're in a title race. They're going to come and they're going to work. Very hard because they get guys like you know guys like Nicky Devlin who's been ha- had a great season so far who has been you know he was he was playing for Livingston last season he's been in the kind of you know he knows what it means to graft in this league they've got a lot of quality players mixed with a lot of great grafters who are going to understand that getting into the top two let alone challenging Celtic is a huge achievement. Or a huge moment for Scottish football if Aberdeen can do that. So I think these guys are going to go knowing that they get a very unique opportunity to, to do something and try their absolute hardest. I don't expect, I would be very surprised and almost somewhat disappointed if Celtic rolled them over. Um, but the reason why I mentioned Mc, uh, McCowan is him coming out in the media and saying, I don't know, like we say, I don't know if this has been misconstrued, but the way it's been interpreted is he said that Aberdeen are not in title race and I just think that bef- the week before you play them it's so maybe a guy that's not used to having this amount of media attention on him but to say that is, I, it never makes you feel good oh, nine times out of ten I feel like that kind of thing comes back to bite you yeah I've got to hope that it's paper talk and that he's not actually said that or maybe said something along the same lines as what I've said which is like nobody's in a title race but there, there is no title race yet we're only seven yeah. games in to a season to start calling it, you know, which is which, which happened to us last year. You know, we went to Ibrox and won one now, and people were like the league's done, and you're like, right, okay, uh, you, you know that that's happened a few times. Mm. You know, as we witnessed last year, the wheels can come off in December. Another team can come and start chapping at the door. Rangers might beat Aberdeen. They, they need to play Rangers. They need to play us. Let's see how they do there. That's the biggest challenge. As much as Rangers' form's been pretty poor. Um, and and even their fans are, are are getting a bit frustrated with the, the the lack of sort of vision and and idea of what that team's about. They still need to go. They still get four games against Rangers, four games against Celtic. You know, if we're sitting here at the end of the season and we've beat them four times and they've dropped points elsewhere, and Rangers are third and Aberdeen are nine, twelve points behind us, we'll be like psh, canter. Yeah. So we'll just need to wait and see. But to write them off would be an absolute devastating mistake on the form that they're on winning tight games playing really well get a coach that knows what they're doing get a team of guys that are hungry so I'm actually really looking forward to the game next week me too and I, I think like you're right the title, there's no title race yet but also it's a it's a very good measuring stick for them to say you know can we can we go not necessarily to a but can we make this a tight game because they could argue outside of the game at the weekend there because of everything we just spoke about that uh, we haven't really had that much of a tight game in the league so far 
So can Aberdeen show that they are up for the fight a wee bit? Can it be a game where we, you know, maybe still come out on top, but we go that was that was competitive. So that's key for me. Can they can Aberdeen lay a glove on Celtic? That is the question. What do you think? How do you think the game's gonna go? Are Aberdeen in the title race? We're gonna find out sooner rather than later, I'm sure, with the game coming up. So it's very refreshing to have a game where two teams are so on the same level consistency wise in the league and going head to head. So let's go and see how that pans out. But regardless of anything, I think that they've pretty much almost secured third already, which is kind of gets overlooked and is a massive achievement by what they've done, just from the gap between them and the rest of everybody now at this point, which which is monumental from where they were last season. So it's going to be very interesting to see how it goes, but let, let, us, say, let us know what you think. How's it going to go? Do you think Aberdeen have the ability to stay consistent through the season? And um, how do you see it going? But I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you again next time.